Hello class, today we'll be studying KCL and KBL, Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. But first, let's do some basic DC circuit review. Can anyone tell me what Ohm's law states? Very good. Ohm's law is a linear relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. It will behave differently in series versus parallel circuits. Can anyone tell me how Ohm's law behaves in a series circuit? Very good. In a series circuit, voltage will be the sum of all the different voltage drops across different loads in the circuit from V sub 1, 2, 3, to whatever the number is of components in the circuit. Current will be equal across all the different loads in the circuit, and resistance will be the sum of all the different resistances in the circuit. Can anyone tell me what Ohm's law states, or how Ohm's law behaves in a parallel circuit? Very good. In a parallel circuit, the voltage across all the different voltage drops will be the same. The current will split up across all of the different ones based on the resistance, and the resistance will be the inverse of all the resistance added up. Typically in DC circuit analysis, we can use circuit reduction to find different variables within a circuit. But sometimes there are certain circuits that cannot be used, or that can, we cannot use circuit reduction for. Therefore, we have another method, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current laws. Here's an example of a circuit which cannot be reduced using simple circuit reduction. This is because the voltage source is in the center and has two possible current directions where the current can flow. Before we do an example of KCL and KBL, we need to go over some basic terminology. Here we have a definition of a node, branch, and loop. A node is any point where two or more circuit elements are connected together. A branch is a circuit element between two nodes, and a loop is a collection of branches that form a closed path returning to the same node without going through any other nodes or branches twice. Now, let's take a look at this example here. Can anyone tell me how many nodes are on this example? Very good. There is four nodes on this example that we can see here, 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 and here. This node is connected to one, two, three circuit elements, as is this node, while these two nodes are only connected to two circuit elements. Can anyone tell me how many branches are in this example? Very good. There's three branches in this example. We can see one connected here between these two nodes, one here between these two nodes, and one here between these two nodes. Now, if we started here, let's call it point A, how many loops would we have in this example? Very good. <laughs> At loop A, we would have two branches going this way and then also going this way. Now, can anyone tell me how many loops we would have if we started it? At point B. Very good. At point B, we would have three loops. We can go around this path, we can go around this path, or we can take the big outside path and have our third loop right there. Understanding what a loop is and how they work with nodes and branches will be critical to understanding how to apply KCL and KBL. Finally, we're going to look at the definitions of Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws and see how we can apply them in an actual example. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of voltage drops is equal to the sum of voltage rises in a closed loop. Next, Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the currents entering a node is equal to the sum of the currents leaving a node. And you can see that in the equations drawn here. Now let's see how we can apply them to this complex circuit. Step one is to assume the direction of the current flow. Now this doesn't have to be right, you just have to stick with it throughout the rest of the example. Here we're going to draw, starting at the voltage source, current flow going here, leaving through both directions of this node, 
And then also coming back to the original voltage source. That's what I'm going to choose. That is arbitrary and it can be any direction and um, you just have to stick with it throughout the rest of the process. Step two, we're going to assign polarities to all the voltage drops and rises. So here I'm going to start at the bottom of the voltage source with a negative. And then going up to a positive. And then starting with this resistor, going from a positive to a negative because resistors drop voltage, not raise, rise. And then here, voltage drop, so positive and negative. Voltage drop here, positive and negative. And voltage drop here, positive and negative. And there we have assigned polarities. Now, with this drawn circuit diagram, we can create a system of equations using Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to solve for the unknown variables. We will now look at how we can use Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to solve different variables within this complex DC circuit. First, we'll look at Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, can anyone tell me? Uh, can anyone give me an equation using loop A and Kirchhoff's voltage law? Good job. So as you can see, starting at this voltage source, and we go around in this loop, we'll have the 12 volts going, um, the 12 volts drop rise is going to be equal to the voltage drop across resistor one and the voltage dr drop across resistor four. Now, can anyone give, create an equation starting at 12 volts for loop B using Kirchhoff's voltage law? Good job. So starting here uh, for loop B at the 12 volts, the voltage rise is 12 volts, as I said, and the voltage drop is equal to the voltage drop across R2, the voltage drop across R3, and the voltage drop across R4. Now let's use KCL, starting or using node A. Can any, anyone give me an equation using KCL for node A? Good job. So the um, equation would be starting here, uh, the current going through R1 plus the current going through R3 is going to be equal to the current going through R4. Another observation we can make is that the current going through R2 is equal to the current going through R I3, so we can just call it I23. Now that we have all our equations here, we want to reorganize them so they're easy for us to use. Note, even in equations that don't involve one of the currents, we still need to include it to get the proper answer. Reorganizing them here and taking the coefficients, we plug them into this matrix here, and we want to solve for x right here. To do that, we have to take the inverse of a to remove it from that side, which will times it times b. Doing so creates the values for i1, 0.24, the value of i2, 3, 0.08, and the value of i4, 0.32. We can then plug those values back into our equations here over each resistor to find the individual voltage drops.